Good evening. So, as you said, I'm Hadi Ahmed from St. Mary's Catholic High School, 16 years of age. Um, today, uh, I, so I need all of your attention, focus, people at the back. Uh, so, let me give you a back story about my life. Like before, ninth, right now I'm in 11th grade, two years back when I was in 9th grade and my life before that. So, I used, like to be practical and honest, I used to be this guy who used to get like 90 plus percentage. I used to respect everyone, all my elders, teachers. Well, this built up a good reputation about me, like that I'm a respectable person, I respect everyone. But no one knew what was deep down in my heart. Deep down, I was scared. I was insecure. I was unconfident for the fact that what if what I do, I'll be judged for it. Someone will come, someone will hate on me, someone will say that what I was doing, it was wrong. <laughs> and one of the main factors that made me like this was my dad. Yes, he was, he was strict. He used to, he, he was strict. That strictness built up a fear in my heart that whatever I will do, I will do it wrong. <laughs> well, this was one reason and then after that, moreover, I had fake friends. Like friends that would always, uh, friends that would never have my back, friends that would leave me, friends that would, uh, if I share my traumatic experiences, I have been through like real traumatic experiences that like I can't even talk about right now. If I shared with them, they would come up to me, they would laugh at me, they would take it as a joke. Even though if they are saying that, um, like, they are like they're sorry for laughing or like no offense or like such phrases, still like I would, over there I would tell them that it's fine, but when I go home I would be crying in my bed all day that why did they say that? So this is one way of looking at it, the way I looked at it back then. The other way is, yes, my dad was strict, yes, my dad used to shout at me, yes, my dad used to beat me sometimes, but like, he used to love me as well. He used to do that because he wanted me to be perfect. He wanted me to be the best of who I am. He wanted, be, he wanted me to be a better me. Uh, but if I would have realized this back then, two years ago and before that, God knows where I will be right now. Uh, because. As time passed by, I realized that how my dad had left all of his friends, he had cancelled his social life just for the sake of me, just so that he can pay attention to me, what I do and make me a better person. <laughs> the, uh, the fake, uh, so what I want to learn, uh, what I want you to learn from this is don't make things about yourself, don't be selfish about everything. Try to look at the same thing from the same scenario, but from the other person's perspective about why he did it, uh, what was his what, what was his or her intentions for doing it. Don't just think that you are the best one over here. Everyone's the best. Everyone's equal. <clears throat> the fake friends. Yes, they left me. Yes, they never had my back. But that made me stronger. That made me realize that I can fight my battles myself. I don't need to be dependent on someone to come and fight for me because I have myself to fight for uh, to fight all these battles I have been through. So, putting all of these two stories together, I would like to say that yes, you need friends. Yes, fr uh, but making friends your life is not everything. Uh, friends are not family. Family is has to be number one priority in, in your life. No one has ever reached the end of his life and regretted not taking his family over friends. Yes, your friends can be real, yes, your friends will be having your back, but no friend will give you 100% assurance of helping you when you are in your worst, but your family will. So, moving on, yes, this is uh, my life before ninth grade. So, like, uh, so a short story, before 10th grade started, uh, I had this friend, his name, uh, no, my father, he forced me to go with my brother to a party he was going in. I didn't want to go, but I was forced to go because you know how Asian parents are. So, so over there, there was this guy named Hassan. I hope some of you know him. Uh, so Hassan, uh, he was like a lit guy. He was hyped up. He was like a famous guy. 
So over there, I was just sitting in the corner. I was watching everyone. Since I was forced to go there, I, I like from my heart, I didn't want to be there. So Hassan started to interact with me, and we became friends. I showed him some memes I had in my phone. He he laughed at them. We uh, and at that night, I had one of the best conversations with him I ever had in before that time. Uh, but in my heart, I had felt I always felt that. Uh, has, I can never be friends with Hassan because he is a famous guy. I am this irrelevant guy. No one knows me. He is hyped up. I am a nerd. No one knows me. So, don't limit yourself to people. Try to try to uh, be social. Try to uh, go out. Try to know people. Try to be a better. Uh, try to be a better self. So, as time passed by, I came to know more and more about Hassan. Uh, he made me meet his friends, which were Hassan, Salem, Ibrahim, and Arham. Uh, we all used to hang out. We all used to roam around. We we were really good friends. But as time passed by, I realized that Hassan, Salem, and Ibrahim they are not good guys by like what they do, what uh, the type of people they roam with. But still, I used to roam with them because they were the only real friends I had in my 15 years of life. I didn't care about the fact that they were worst, but I cared that yes, they had been real for me and they had my back when I needed them the most. So uh, I I started to become like one of them. I I, I gained confidence. I gained I, it, it boosted my self esteem. Uh, I tried. Uh, it boosted my self esteem. Uh, uh, like. I uh, I started talking to so many people. I had so many friends, but I was doing everything. Oh, I was following all the trends, but I was doing it in my own way. By my own way, I mean how my mom brought me up to respect girls. How like me, I have gotten mostly my mom's genes. So I'm emotionally supportive, like really emotionally supportive to everyone, even if they are fake to me. So. I used to help depressed people a lot. Anywhere on Instagram, I see someone post a picture of their arms slit or someone like that. I would just go straight up. I would start helping them. So there are uh, talking about mental health. I would like to say, if any one of you all over here are suffering with anxiety, depression, or something that affects you mentally in a bad way, don't suppress it. Don't keep it within you. Go out. You consult someone. Ask someone, ask for help, because you suppressing your own uh, mental health will lead to your own misery. So helping depressed people, there are two stories connected to this. One story ruined my life in a long term, and one in the short term. So the story that ruined my life in the long term, there used to be this girl. She used to post pictures of her arms slit and all of this. I started helping her. Everyone used to say that she is doing it for attention. She she, that's not real depression, but I still used to help her. I I helped her for four straight months, uh, and as soon as she got better, she went out. She started. She spread fake rumors about me that I used to abuse her verbally, like uh, I wasn't kind to her. I used to hurt her feelings. So that led to a chain reaction of all the rumors about me right now. The other story in the short term was, as I was helping depressed people, I used to help so much that like my messages used to be filled with people. People were using me. I like If I will help one and I won't help the other one, they'll be like, oh, you're ignoring me now. You don't want to be my friend like that. And as people would get better, they would leave me. But I didn't really care because like helping people was my hobby. I used to... Um, making people happy made me happy. And so as time passed by, it became such a burden that I myself got depression. It was for like two, three, like uh, two, three weeks, but it was a real bad time. And that was the time I realized who are my real friends, who are the people that are using me for their help, and who are the people that are that appreciate me are, and are going to be there for me. So. Uh, this led to me removing so many people from my life and I left like only six, seven people that were real to me from the beginning. So, uh, I, would, uh, I would like to tell you that don't uh, be a positive person. Don't spread rumors, uh, don't spread rumors around not knowing the deeper, uh, the deeper meaning. Don't 
like people will misunderstand misunderstand your thoughts your positive intentions change it into negative spread around as if you are the worst guy even when you wanted to be the best that's that's going to hurt you but you need to ignore it you need to uh, you need to ignore it you need to do what your mind tells you to do not what other people want you to do you have to do what your heart says what your heart tells you to do so let's uh, mo uh, let's move on to the topic of love well for me i believe there is no such thing as love in this uh, in this like at my age or younger than me because it's just teenagers following trends being uh, having uh, just it's like a competition of who has the hottest who has the hottest girlfriend who has the hottest boyfriend who is uh, who has the most partners in the in one time it, th this generation has made it seem like a man or a woman being loyal to their partner is uh, being is a luxury instead it should be a standard to conclude my speech i would say yes i'm not a saint yes i'm not the best person to talk about all this yes i have made mistakes in my past that led to uh, my misery yes uh, yes but like i i'm i'm trying my best to change now i have realized that i like even if i want others best i myself also need to be the best so this uh, i i am right now me it's me trying to make myself a better person and uh, rather than going out and helping people yes i do that but i try my best to make myself a better person